Hello and welcome back to the channel. I'm Leila, the Lenormand Reader. If you're new here, welcome. I'd love for you to join and subscribe because we do some interesting readings with this amazing Lenormand deck. Now, this is a pick a card reading and for this reading, we are going to focus on how to overcome a fear or maybe a set of fears. So for this reading, I want you to think about what you feel is something that you are afraid of or something that makes you anxious. Maybe it is something that you are fully aware of and you want to deal with it, or maybe it's something a bit below the surface, possibly a bit subconscious, and you sort of want to tune into it and understand it better so that you can deal with it. So this reading is really a great opportunity to do some inner work, become more aware of some limitations, some fears, some blockages that are coming in your way and that you need to get out of your way so that you can move forward with more flow and enthusiasm. Now for this reading, I have six different charms, so we're going to do six different readings, but we are going to use only one deck. So the Lenormand deck has 36 cards, and so what we're gonna do is a six by six. So we're gonna do six shorter focused readings so that we really zoom into that fear and what you need to do to deal with it. So while I deal the cards, you might want to tune into each of these charms here and think about which one you resonate with. So we've got the pebble, we've got the shell, we've got a four-leaf clover. It is, uh, it is in a stone, but it is actually a real clover in there. And we have an acorn as well as the pine and a little feather here. All right, so I'm going to deal the cards and you tune into the charm that you want to resonate with for this reading. And my deck is already shuffled, but I always like to shuffle it a little bit before I deal the cards. All right. All right, so here we are. We've got six piles of six, and each of the pile is next to its charm. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start reading each of these, and we're gonna keep the cards in their order. So let's now tune into the first one for the pebble. All right, here we are for the pebble reading. So I've got the six cards here. I am gonna leave them in this order, and I'm just gonna open them into the six card reading. All right, how interesting. I'm enjoying this because I think the theme immediately comes out as I lay out the cards. When I see the ring and I see the house, I am looking at intimacy. I am feeling from these six cards, before we get into the combinations in detail, that maybe getting close to someone or getting close to a situation, um, intimacy, or possibly really getting involved in something could be what is scaring you. So it's possible that in the context of relationships, you're worried about getting too close, and in other contexts like work or other involvements, it's really about you know getting your hands dirty with something, really going all in on something. This is what could be the thing that scares you or the thing that causes you anxiety. So let's start reading these lines and put them together. In the top line, we've got the clouds, the rider, and the bear. Now, these are some pretty active cards because of the rider right in the middle here. But because of the clouds at the outset and then the bear afterwards, I think what could be worrying you is you know, you, you hesitate before you move forward. You hold yourself back. And the thing is, is once you start moving forward, you have that sense of protection. Um, so that's how I would read the bear in this context, is that you sort of protect yourself. So again, this really ties into this theme that we're seeing through these cards that you don't go all in. You don't give of yourself for it. You sort of you know, you guard yourself. You worry about going all in or committing fully or, you know, just getting into this intimate situation. You know, this is what could be coming through here. So you do have that sense of you protect yourself from going forward too much. And the clouds here suggest that you hesitate, you wobble a little bit as you move forward. And the bottom line has the ring, house, and cross. So again, like I said, the ring and um, house together, they jump out to me in this context um, to relate to this idea of intimacy and this is what could be concerning you. And you know, the cross can be a challenging card 
it is about decisions and burdens and it is like you feel like you don't want to be tied down you feel like you don't want to overcommit you want to remain free and you know you don't want to feel like you're overly involved in something and so this is the what is it a pattern or a thing in your mind in your heart that could be in the way of a goal that you want or something that you want this is the anxiety area for you to focus on and i think these are i mean these this is pretty common it's not like it's not uncommon you know there are many times when we feel we don't want to go all in we want to guard ourselves a little bit this is you know something that happens but i do think that this is the opportunity for you that if you manage to get through this then you know you'll have more momentum in fact you'll feel freer what's interesting is that sometimes we feel we don't want to get involved too much because it might tie us down but actually it can be the opposite you know it's really sometimes when you let yourself go fully and you really just let yourself to fall into this that you can experience a sense of freedom because you're not putting limitations to how you experience it you know that's also a way to look at it just food for thought. Now let's look at these columns here. We've got the clouds and ring. Again, the idea of really thinking a lot about whether you get involved with something. And then the rider and house is really allowing people into your space, you know, into your privacy. This is something also that you guard against. That's what we're seeing through here. And then the bear and cross is again that sense of burden they're they're both heavier cards you know they, they tend to be heavier you know the crosses the cross we bear and the bear is a big heavy animal so together they have that sense of heaviness and again it's the idea that you don't want to feel tied down you don't want to feel like you know you don't have space or that you're feeling stifled by this involvement or this commitment but again i invite you to think about this a little bit differently you know it is about giving yourself freedom to experience something fully you know, and to not be afraid of being totally involved in something. You can always change your mind later, but the idea is that you immerse yourself in it and that gives you a sense of freedom, you know, a sense of having a full experience into something. So let's look at a few diagonals here. We've got the clouds and house and then we've got the house and bear. You know, that's interesting. I have to wonder if the idea of the parents is coming through. You know, we have the ring and house, we have the bear and house. The bear and house represents the parents. The ring is about, you know, relationships. And of course, the home um, is about, you know, our home, our family, our foundation. So I'm wondering if there might be maybe a deeper pattern or a parent pattern here at play that could be the source possibly of your fears or part of it. Um, you know, the idea that you don't want to be um, feeling overwhelmed by someone. Perhaps your parents were a little bit imposing on you and you, you don't want that sense of feeling tied down. I'm just saying it's a possibility, just putting it out there. Another way to look at the cards here, this diagonal, clouds and house, again, this idea of you know your privacy your boundaries and the bear is a protective card in this context so it's really about wanting to protect your space we're seeing these messages coming through and through again and then we've got the ring rider and cross and i think the cross in this sense can have to do with your direction you know the sense of coming after the rider the idea of direction like where you're heading comes through and so with the ring here it's about commitment so it seems that you're afraid of committing to a certain path fully. Again, this idea of just really giving it a chance and going in it fully is what's highlighted. And because of this diagonal, I would say you want to give this approach a chance. And what I mean by that is you want to give yourself a chance to experience something fully, to really immerse yourself in a path as you pursue it, in an experience, in a relationship. You don't want to hold back. And I'm not saying you do this with everything. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying when there is something that you're attracted to, that you feel you want to experience, you know, don't hold back. Really give yourself room to experience it fully. That's what I mean. The things that make sense to you, the things that support you, that add value to your life, these are the same things we're talking about. Of course, we're not saying you go immerse yourself in anything and everything and anyone. No, no. We're saying you want to experience the things that are meaningful to you 
So experience them fully. Don't hold back when you know that this could be good for you. So I think this is a really beautiful message. I think it's a really kind message. Um, it nurtures you, it supports you, it reassures you that you know, you want to take up more space. You want to dive more deeply into things and allow yourself to experience things and feel them a bit more deeply. You know, don't be afraid of feelings. Don't be afraid of committing to something. Yes, sometimes when we backtrack on a commitment, it can be a bit painful, but hey, that's part of the experience. And you know, you come out on top and you come out having learned something important and we can see this you know through the barren cross here especially the fact that it figures on the right hand side of the th six card layout here so i think these are beautiful cards let me know what you make of them do you feel you can practice some of these ideas i'd love your comments so Again, best of luck with this. And before I let you go, a reminder that I have plenty of resources for you in the description box, so check them out. I'm looking forward to our next reading together. Thank you so much for tuning in. All right, now let's look at the shell cards. So this is for the group um, of the shell, and we've got our six cards here. I'm gonna keep them in the same order that I dealt them in. I'm not just gonna deal the cards into the layout of six cards. Oh, wow. Interesting. Wow. Look at the man and woman figuring here together. And what immediately turned me on actually was not the man and the woman as much as it was these two cards. And then after I saw these two, we get the dog. And so the relationship element is very clearly coming through these cards. There's no two way about it. The man and woman figuring together and in the middle. This is an important relationship. Now, when I see the tower and the flowers, this has to do with forgiveness, okay? It has to do with forgiving a past chapter. It can be related to the parents. It could be that this is not an intimate relationship that you had. It could be that this is about your parents. And, you know, this tower here has to do with the long term and our roots. And so this could be about forgiving parents, you know, and the mountain here can refer to distance. The dog can refer to a child, you know, so this is about family, your roots, your foundations. This is a powerful spread. Let's get into the lines and weave the different possibilities. So the top line, we've got the tower, woman, and mountain. So this can refer to something that has to do with a long-term past chapter. Something that's rooted to the deep past, the tower and mountain can refer to the deep past. And the woman in the line here can refer to uh, either someone you had known for a long time, someone you had been away from for a long time. And I say that because the mountain is a card of coldness when it comes to relationships. It has to do with distance and you know coldness and lack of communication things that are stale or a stalemate is a more appropriate word and so there could have been a relationship that maybe you didn't get over maybe this is the issue this is the blockage it can be a friend it can be a partner it could have been an intimate relationship or it could be a parent a mother a sibling Someone important, you know, the woman is uh, the woman and man are always uh, about someone important in our life. So there has been time and distance, and it seems that we need to close that gap. So when we look at the bottom line, we have more flexible, flowing cards. These two here are very, you know, rigid cards. Um, the tower is a very conservative type of card. You know, it has to do with authority and expertise and you know someone who's just generally conservative and the mountain is a very rigid card as well but we look at the bottom line and we've got the flowers and the dog and these are both flowing flexible cards they are joyous cards you know they bring this energy that lifts things off very in very much in contrast with the top line and we've got the man in the middle so obviously this has to do with a time apart as a, a phase of coldness that now needs to thaw. It needs to be thawed out. Um, it's time to let go of this past coldness and to allow for forgiveness. And I think a friendship is possible because of the dog and the flowers. A friendship is possible, a reunion, a sense of forgiveness, very powerful coming through these two cards. We're going to get to the columns. And so these are some interesting cards and really 
I think they're really beautiful cards because forgiveness is really a gift. And the thing is, is that forgiveness is a tricky concept. Not everyone understands it well. Forgiveness is not about condoning behaviors. Forgiveness is about letting go of the negative episode and setting yourself free. That's what forgiveness is. So in the process, in this situation, I'm not saying forgiveness in every situation, I'm saying forgiveness through these cards, it can bring about a reunion in the relationship, an understanding, a sense of freedom, something that lifts off. Now, how does this tie into the fear that we're looking into for this reading? Well, it has to do with not wanting to let go of the negative episode. Sometimes we're afraid to let go because we feel that if we let go of the negative episode, then we are condoning the behavior. But that's not what happens. When you forgive the behavior, you set yourself free. And so what happens is that the whole energy changes. So you don't have to feel like, oh, you're, you're embarrassed that you caved or anything like that. No, no, that's not, that's not it. That's not how it works. It's more like you know, you set yourself free and you change your energy and you're not attached to the negativity. So actually people come to you for acknowledgement often enough. It happens that way. So, you know, you want to get your head a little bit around the dynamics of forgiveness um, because in this situation, in this important relationship, it looks like it can be really helpful. Don't be afraid to let go of the negativity and to give, your chance, give yourself a chance for a fresh start. So the tower and flowers is really the combination that points to negativity. It's one of my special combinations. It is about letting go of the past and really forgiving the past, anything that's been holding you back in the past. You know, it's time for forgiveness, for letting go and just really just going beyond it, past it. And then the man and the woman here, obviously this has to do with an important partnership, an important relationship. It can be any kind of important bond in your life. And it can refer to the parents. And in the context of the tower and flowers, this can probably have to do with forgiving your parents or you know, forgiving some aspects of your childhood or perhaps another episode that's gone on with your parents. Perhaps this has to do with the relationship between them and this has affected you somehow in a negative way, possibly, and that now you are ready to forgive and to see them for people, you know, like people with vulnerabilities, with a child inside of them as well, just like you. So these are beautiful messages. And then on the last line here, we've got the mountain and the dog. This is an interesting combination that has to do with someone living abroad or someone being abroad. It could be that you reunite for some time and then you move back or, you know, people go back their separate ways. That is possible. But the idea is through this transition, you're able to patch up the misunderstanding. You're able to forgive and you're able to move on you're able to move on. So the mountain is that rigid card, but it is also a card, especially with the softer card like the dog, when we're looking at these two together, you know, it, it, it passes, it gets over this blockage and the sense of softness is coming back through the dog. So it's not, you don't have to like be best friends all over again or anything like that. No, it's really just about resolving this issue resolution understanding and you let yourself go and then you can move on and it's like you know you you don't you no longer have that burden so i think that is the potential for you i think that's the possibility if you are willing to grow beyond that phase and forgive and to understand what forgiveness really means and that is that it is setting yourself free from holding on to anything negative. So I think this is a beautiful message. Um, let me know how you feel this applies in your specific circumstances. Are you willing to forgive? Are you ready? Are you wanting to let go? Do you want to um, get some clarity around this and move past it? I think you have a very good opportunity and a great potential through this. And so I, I hope you take these messages to heart. Again, I look forward to your comments.
this is beautiful. Best of luck with it. And before I let you go, just a reminder that I have plenty of links for you in the description box. Check them out for learning and for private readings. So thanks so much again for tuning in and I'm looking forward to our next reading together. All right, here we are for the Clover reading. We've got our six cards that we uh, dealt earlier and we're gonna keep them in this order and we're just gonna deal them out into the six card layout. All right, now this is an interesting combination of cards. We've got two of the challenging cards of the deck. We've got the whip and the scythe, but we have this really powerful combination that comes through the tree and key. In my dictionary, the tree and key is a powerful combination. It's one of my favorite combinations to see, and it has to do with achieving a very important goal. So it looks like through the scythe and whip, you really need to get cracking at something so that you achieve this very important goal. And we're gonna weave the cards together into the details and put the whole story together. But what I'm thinking is that you might want to either get someone out of your way or you need to get some chatter out of the way and boundaries need to come into play so that you have the space you need in order to achieve this major goal. I'm seeing these are possibilities. So let's start weaving the cards. We've got the scythe, tree, and key in the top line here. And this could be that you suddenly decide to just totally focus in on this goal and you're just gonna do it. You know, you make this really sharp decision that you are gonna totally focus on this goal. So in the context of our reading, which is how to overcome a certain fear, it could mean that you are you know, afraid of taking that leap of faith into going after that goal. Maybe you're holding yourself back. Maybe you're not sure if it's gonna work out. Well, guess what? The scythe here is telling you that you need to just do it. That is what the scythe is telling you. And you could have been holding back, but you know what? I, I really like seeing the tree and key together because they're really promising. You could achieve something serious here, but you have to be willing to do it and you have to get over this blockage and take that leap of faith and do it. And the bottom line, we've got the bird, whip, and book. Now, this is an interesting combination. The bird and whip is another one of those special combinations in my dictionary, and it has to do with gossip. And what's interesting is that the book here, it has to do with maybe news that comes through, and with the whip, it could be bad news or it could be bad feedback. I think what this is telling us, what this is telling us is that you're afraid of what people are gonna think when you pursue this goal. Well, guess what? You can't be worried forever about what people are gonna think before you start pursuing your goals. You're gonna have to try, and like everything else you're gonna do in life, some people are gonna like it and some people are not. And so it is up to you to decide what is more important, what other people say or your goals and the passing of time. You need to pursue these goals before too much time is wasted in your life. Think about this. I mean, really, these cards are so interesting and so helpful and so clear. You can't be worried about what people say. You can't be worried about what people are gonna say behind your back, in front of you, in front of you, gossip to others, you know, what they say in the marketplace. Of course you want to maintain, you know, a good profile and you want to have a good standing in your community, on the job and in business and everywhere else. At the same time, there is a balance, you know, because not everything you do is gonna be welcomed by every single person. In fact, something that I read recently, and that was really interesting, someone said that, when you get negative feedback, you're actually doing something right. And I think this had to do with social media or some social media in general. When people get haters, you know, that's when you know that you're doing something right because what you're doing is that you are carving out for yourself a niche. And so some people fall out of it and some people stick to it. And when you specialize that way, you start to create your tribe. You know, it was a really interesting concept. And I really think it applies here because you know, you are on the right track when you start getting, you know, different kinds of feedback. You're getting responses and so you get a sense of what this is creating. But it remains that your goals are really very important and the tree and key are very, very promising in this way. So very interesting cards. I love the clarity here. Let's continue with some combinations. We've got the scythe and bird. Again, this can be someone 
hurtful. This can be a challenging conversation. You know, it can feel like it's a bite or, you know, like something that pinches hurts you a little bit maybe that's what you're worried about you're worried about you know how if people are going to be hurtful or you know what they're gonna what they're gonna say really so I do feel that also what's coming through here is that you're afraid of feeling hurt you're afraid of negative feedback you're afraid of you know hearing things that you don't really want to hear well I don't think there's a way around it if you want to achieve that goal I think it's part of it <laughs> so I do think you've got the strength for it. Look, we've got the tree and the whip. They're both very powerful cards. But what's nice about the tree is that it's really centered. And the whip is a bit of a stormy card. You know, so this is a bit like the eye of the storm. You, you're going to have to center yourself in what's important to you. And, you know, what goes on around you is going to probably go on anyway. So just focus and be centered in yourself and achieve these goals. And then we've got the key and book. This is a, a beautiful combination that has to do with solving a problem, solving a riddle, unlocking potential, figuring it out. Really, this is a very intelligent and insightful combination. You know, a lot of intelligence and brilliance are coming through here. So... Look, you really have what it takes. I think you should assess the situation. I'm not saying don't be cautious. I'll always tell you to be cautious and wise and to be aware of what's going on around you. But, you know, you need to break through this limitation and you need to get over the fact that some people are going to say bad things. Some people are going to say nice things. And, you know, it's a practice. You, you practice uh, getting tougher. You practice getting thicker skin. And at some point, you know, you're just going to be surrounded by the people who appreciate what you do. And this is going to strengthen you and it's going to keep you going. So you need to have that leap of faith and to just do what you know that you're meant to do. We're going to wrap up with a few diagonals. We've got the scythe, whip, and key. Two challenging cards, yes, but it's really nice to see the key on the other side of it. So... It might be difficult for you to overcome this, but you are going to overcome it thanks to the key. And then we've got the bird, tree, and book. And this is a pretty um, combination that has to do with communication. But, you know, the fact that the book is at the uh, end of the line, at the end of this diagonal line, suggests that, you know, you don't reveal everything to everyone. And the tree is a very wise card. And with the book, it has to do with wisdom and knowledge. And it really is about maturing, you know? So you're gonna become more mature about this. You're gonna have more confidence in yourself. You're gonna easily overcome, at some point, you're gonna be able to overcome what people say and how they feel. And, you know, you're gonna live more for yourself. So this is a really powerful combination and I think it bodes really well. And what also comes through is that you gain experience and knowledge, you know? And this is important for your growth, for your evolution. So overall, I think this is a lovely set of cards. I love the clarity that's coming through these cards. You are just going to have to get over what people say and think <laughs> if you want to achieve that goal. And that is what the fear is about. And this is what the message is for you to deal with that fear is you need to take a leap of faith and you need to cut through this limitation and what's really nice is that you have some lovely cards that come to support you and to reassure you that you are going to come out of this with good experience if not an altogether superbly achieved goal so wonderful cards again i'd love to hear your comments and your thoughts about this so please leave me your thoughts in the comments below and before I let you go, I want to remind you to check out the links I have for you in the description box. I have a number of them uh, for you to learn Lenormand and also to take advantage of it through private readings. So I'm looking forward to our next Pick a Card reading together. Thank you so much again for watching. All right, and here we are with the group for the acorn, and we've got the six cards that we dealt earlier. We are going to keep them in this order, and we're just going to deal them out into the six card layout. Interesting, interesting set of cards. Now, I think the clearest message is coming through the child and the mouse here with regards to the fear and what the fear is about. 
But then we look at these four cards here and they are so pretty. We've got the heart, the letter, the clover and the lily together. There's such a beautiful energy coming through here. Now from the outset, I really think the key answer, the key input into the question that we're asking, which is about how to overcome the fear, the child and mouse tells us that you are feeling unprepared and that this is what could be the source of fear for you. Now, what you need to be prepared for, the area, there could be a number of things that we have clues about here. This could be a relationship because of the heart. This could be a new career or something on the job. These are possible. And the letter can suggest, you know, about communication. And so really any area of your life can be highlighted, but I do think it has to do with the idea of investing yourself in something, a bit of commitment, I think that's coming through. So the child and mouse are the key here telling us what the fear, what the blockage is about. So let's get into the details of the six card and then we'll put the story together. In the top line, we have the child, the heart, and the clover. So obviously this has to do with taking a first step with something that you love, something that you're passionate about. It can be a relationship, it can be something else. And the thing about the child and heart is that you have these feelings of innocence, you know, there is a lot of tenderness that is coming through these cards. And so, because of the mouse, I think you're feeling vulnerable, like you're feeling open, too open, maybe more open than what you're comfortable with. I think that's possible. But you know, it's really nice to see the clover at the end of the line. I really think that, um, you know, this is really good for you. You know, you're gonna come out with a gift. It has a gift, it has a blessing, uh, you know, that's coming through. So you want to be open to the good. So keep affirming your good. And you really want to be open to the experience. So even if you're feeling vulnerable, um, and you know open in that sense you want to move forward in it now of course this needs to be the right situation for you I'm not saying this is applying to any situation it has to be the one that resonates with you and you know when you think about these readings when you tune into these readings oftentimes you know what I'm talking about in your head like you know you can identify the situation so keep resonating with that because it's important now the bottom line there is the mouse letter and lily so obviously the mouse is this challenging card. It's not very challenging. It's a little bit challenging. It's the card of glitches and delays and speed bumps and you know, the little things that get in your way. And when we see the letter and Lily here together, then it's interesting because the Lily is a card of important things, the long term, career, etc. And with the letter, there could be something of a contract or maybe something of a commitment. The idea is that the letter with the Lily makes the letter a bit more important than just the day to day communication. It's more of a it's something important. It can involve some kind of contract, a commitment or something like that. And with the mouse here, we're seeing that sense of hesitation, um, you know, the fearfulness, um, the wobbliness around it, not really knowing how to tackle this. And it could be because you're feeling like you're not ready. Again, you know, there is that sense of Im immaturity that comes through the child. And with the mouse, this is what could be highlighted. So you could feel like you're not ready, that you're not up for this, that you know, you're feeling too small or not good enough for this. And really the clover and the heart and, you know, the way the cards come together, really the message is for you to not really buy into that. I mean, maybe you're not prepared, but it doesn't mean that you can't learn as you go. It doesn't mean that you can't ask questions as you go. It doesn't mean that you can't clarify matters as you go. You can do that, even if you're not fully prepared. You, you can't expect yourself to know everything from the get-go, you know? I mean, the path is a path because you have to walk it. You have to go through it. So I think that's one key message. And then another key message is, you know, the blessing that awaits you. So you know, you don't have good reasons to be suspicious and hesitant this way. Of course you're cautious. Of course you, you always take precautions in anything you do. But in this situation, you know, the, and the one that's calling to you, the, the one that's resonating with you, you want to give it a try. You want to move forward, you know, don't hold yourself back. 
So let's get into the columns here. There's some pretty messages. We've got the child and mouse, like we said. You know, this has to do with fear taking the first step, fear of moving into this, fear of not being good enough, of being vulnerable. This is what's coming through. The letter and heart together, a very beautiful combination. Happy news, good news is at hand for you. And also I would say if you are the one who needs to take initiative and put this communication out, then you know, just take the mouse and letter to tell you that you want to review it thoroughly, you want to go over the details. You don't have to rush it, so you don't have to feel like you're under pressure to deliver uh, faster than you're ready. Take your time to review the communication, to get into the details until you have that confidence and, you know, put your heart in it as well. Um, you know, like make it genuine, make it a genuine communication. And I think that's really going to pay off because we see the clover and the lily on the right hand side of the six card here. And this is a beautiful message that has to do with all around success, an important milestone, a sense of fulfillment. And you know, what's interesting about the lily is that it highlights your life in a broader way. So whatever it is that's holding you back here, once you get past it and you acknowledge yourself as not being not good enough, you know, you're, this can affect your life in a deeper way. Um, and it could be a time of growth because what's interesting is that the lily is associated with elderly people and the child is about children. So this could be an opportunity for a major evolution if you're willing to take that first step if you're willing to trust yourself a bit more, give yourself a chance, even if you're feeling immature or unprepared for the situation, you know, you can take the first step and you will learn and grow. I mean, that's how everyone does it. So um, a beautiful set of cards. And I would say it's beautiful in any context, whether it's in love, in your life, in other ways, at work, other areas of your life. They're really beautiful cards that deliver a beautiful message. So take that first step. It's okay to be a little bit immature and unprepared for the situation. You will learn, you will grow, and you will get the rewards. So let me know how you feel this is playing out for you. What is that first step that you need to take? I'd love to know. And so very best of luck with this. I'm really looking forward to your comments. And before I let you go, just a reminder to have you check out the links in the description box. I've got plenty to offer. I'd love for you to check it out. So thanks so much for tuning in, and I'm so looking forward to our next reading together. All right, here we are with the Pinecone group. We've got our little Pinecone here and our six cards, which we dealt earlier, and we are going to keep them in this order, and I'm just going to deal them out into the six card layout here. All right. All right, interesting, interesting. This is a set of cards that are focused on practical matters. I say that because we've got the fish, but on top of that, we've got the fox, which is a job-oriented card, especially when there's a, a fish nearby. And we've got the ship, which is very much about investments and commercial transactions. And, you know, it's an active uh, card that's often associated with activity and rewards and, you know, work-related and investment-related activities. So the money aspect is highlighted. And what is also clear in the cards is the presence of the snake and the presence of the fox. So what's interesting is that these two cards have a lot in common. They can both represent tricky individuals. Um, they represent diplomacy, being clever, you know, being smart around people. And they're both really goal-oriented cards. So practical matters are highlighted. Let's dig out what is at the bottom of this fear and how you're going to overcome it. So let's start with the top line. We've got the ship, anchor, and fox. Now that's interesting. Here's why. Because what's normally expected is that you have an anchor before the ship and you take off. You know, so the idea of the ship is to take off. But what we're seeing here is that you wander and you want to settle on something. And what's really nice is that we've got the fox on top of the anchor. The fox is a card that is steady. When it comes to work, when it comes to discipline, it is a very disciplined card. The fox is really disciplined. 
It knows what it needs to do and it does it. It's actually very loyal to family, interestingly enough. And it really puts its family first. So Fox people are people who are going to work very hard and sacrifice a lot to achieve their goals, make ends meet, and fulfill the needs of their families. And so what we're seeing in this line for you is that you need to settle on a course. You need to stick with it. You need to be disciplined about it if you want to see results. Now that's a really interesting message. So if you've been wandering and wobbling, you know, you'll need to find a course and stick with it for some time because otherwise you're not going to see results. And you need to discipline yourself and you might even need to make a few sacrifices. That's possible. So this is what could be at the bottom of the fear that you are not willing to settle on something. You want to wander, you want to, you know, explore different things, but the anchor followed by the fox and the anchor being in the middle here, especially the fact that it's after the, it's coming after the ship, then it has to do with, you know, you've traveled, you've explored, now you need to settle on something. And maybe you're dreading that. Maybe you don't want to get to work and get to discipline yourself on this certain something. And I'm not saying this is happening all over your life. No, I'm saying this could be in a specific area, but you might feel like it covers your life in general. That's, that's also interesting. And if you get clarity around what I'm saying, if you think about what I'm saying and what these cards are saying, you know, you could potentially achieve some really major insights. You know, the idea that you're going to settle your course on something and pursue it and be disciplined about it. This is very powerful. This can be life changing. So see where you think it applies in your life and think about where you've been wobbling or where you've done enough exploring, enough thinking. And now what course are you going to settle on? and how you're gonna discipline yourself to build something in it. Moving on to the bottom line, we've got the snake, fish, and moon. I like to see these cards together. I know people don't like the snake, but there are combinations where I actually appreciate the snake, and with the fish is one of them. Because the snake is a very smart card, and when it comes to practical matters like money, then we can look forward to some really good um, results here. We can look forward to you being really focused on your goal. And the moon is a softer card, and it has to do with evolution and growth. And so what I'm sensing from the sign is that you want to build your financial security, and we're gonna see this through the middle column, through the anchor and fish, but you really need to get clear on your financial goals, other practical goals, um, and you need to be disciplined about certain things like money or the task at hand, what you're building, and in time you will see results. So there are a few slower cards here. We've got the snake, the anchor, and the moon. They are slower cards and we're going to get to this diagonal. So the idea of steadiness and you know this idea of just settling and sitting into something and working on it until it builds to become something tangible is really highlighted by these cards. So enough wandering, enough wobbling, enough being all over the place. Now you're gonna focus on something and you're gonna make it happen, okay? Now, let's move into the columns, the ship and snake. Interesting. So because it's in the earlier part of the sixth card, I'm tempted to say that this is maybe your wandering phase, that you've been going in circles maybe, or possibly doing figure eights, just going, going, and not really going anywhere, if you know what I mean. So now with the anchor and fish, it's really about building your security, settling on something, sticking with something long enough until you start seeing results, because otherwise you're not going to build anything. So you need to stick with this until you see results. And you know what? Both the anchor and fish are powerfully positive cards and they have to do with successful uh, financial prosperity, successful foundations and successful results. So you do have um, the potential to achieve this, but you need to make the decision that you're going to settle on it. 
don't be afraid to commit on something for some time and don't be afraid of letting go of this wandering phase you know um, you can always come back to it later when you you're taking a break from your ambitions and your goals and your work um, but you want to now start doing more than exploring you want to stick with something and start doing and I feel that maybe you're dreading this like you don't want to be tied down on something and you know you, you're enjoying the wandering but at some point you're gonna to have to sit down and do something and really build something and so this is what we're seeing here what's really interesting is this last combination here we've got the fox and mountain sorry the fox and moon and it's one of those special combinations in my dictionary it has to do with turning down an offer now isn't that interesting we have the anchor and fish figuring together and then we have the fox and moon suggesting turning down an offer in the context of this wandering situation, what I'm thinking is that you're going to need to learn to say no in order to focus on your priorities, in order to focus on your goals. So it seems that before you were maybe wandering, you would, you know, you'd go with everything, you'd explore everything, and that's really good. I mean, there are times in life when we need to do this because we are exploring um, our, our possibilities. You know, we're going beyond what we'd previously known, we're pushing the boundaries, but then we go back to this, we build on something. So once you find what you're gonna start building on through the anchor and fish, afterwards, after that, you're going to start saying no in order to focus on that. And it's not just that you will, but it's also an advice to you that you want to limit distractions. You don't want to just go to any place or take up any invitation or just say yes to everything. You need to guard your time. You need to guard your energy. You want to focus and you want to remain consistent. So really, when you put your priorities and your financial security and your practical results first, as well as your, your inner results, not just practical, really. It's just that this layout is very much focused on results then you're probably going to find yourself saying no more and more and i think that is a good thing because it tells us that you are using your time more intelligently and you're closer to your priorities and you're enjoying working on them so it's really good and these are interesting messages um i'd love to know what you make of them so are you feeling that you need to now stop wondering about something and settle on a course and build something within it. I'd love to know what that is. So leave me some comments. Let me know what specifics are playing out for you. I'd love to hear them. And before I let you go, I want to remind you that I have lots of helpful links for you in the description. So check them out. And until we meet again, I want to thank you so much for watching. And I'm looking forward to our next reading together. All right, here we are with the last a group. This is the group of the feather people here. We've got this lovely feather here and I've got the six cards that we dealt earlier. I'm going to keep them in this order and we're going to deal them into the six card layout. So now this is lovely. Oh, this is lovely. This is so pretty. Look, we've got the sun and star here, but you know, it's not the sun and star that's actually making me say that this is lovely. It's actually the coffin. Why do I say that? Because it's right next to the road and there's the stork as well. This is the end of the road, okay? The fear here has to do with admitting that something is ending. This is powerful. And of course, it's beautiful to see the sun and star in the reading. And not only that, but it's on the right side of the layout, which means that, you know, you, you close a chapter and then there is this sense of healing and enlightenment and the sun and the star and the skies and all of these powerful energies from the heavens, you know, are coming through. So you need to put something to an end or admit that it is ending because after that you can experience freedom okay you need to release yourself from the situation you need to let go and experience a new freedom and so the fear is focused on letting go the fear of letting go the fear of calling it a day admitting that it's over and that it's time to move on but you know what once you do you're going to be so glad that you did because we've got the sun and star and it's such a beautiful set of cards. I love this. So let's read the lines and put this layout together. In the top line, we've got the road, coffin, and sun. 
it's the end of the road, okay? And this is clear, this is like typical Lenormand, so in your face and so clear, road, end, end of the road. So that's it, you know, you reach the end of the road and what's nice is that the sun on the other side of this can mean that it's a successful completion. Like it's not something that you have to call off and finish off because it's not working. It can be that you actually achieve a goal and you achieve it successfully. And so this is what could be coming through here. And of course, it can be that you are relieved that this is finally over. And maybe you still don't see at this stage that you will be relieved. Maybe you're still feeling like you need to hang on. And of course, this is where the fear is because this is our question. This is what the reading is focused on. But you know, the sun is in your, in your cards and so is the star and you're gonna be happy that you finally overcome this. You know, sometimes it's harder to wobble about something than to just let it go completely. So when people are trying to quit an addiction, for example, sometimes it's harder to struggle with the addiction itself than to actually quit altogether. It, sometimes it's just easier to let it go because then you don't have to deal with everything that comes with, you know, sticking with it. You know, so that kind of freedom is possible for you. Now, at the bottom line, we've got the garden, stork, and star. And again, we are looking at some changes here. The stork is all about change. It shakes things up, it shuffles things around. And so with the garden here, you want to shake things up around you. You know, you maybe you'd been in a stale environment, it's been the same thing, the same uh, the same look, the same furniture, the same clothes, the same people, the same everything. And the stork invites you to really shake things out. So think about where you'd like to change things around because with the star in the line, we are looking at a beautiful sense of relief, a sense of infusing some fresh energy into your environment you know the idea of you know breathing in some some sense of newness you know and just changing things around it's always nice to change things around to change scenery it's refreshing and this is clearly what you are being asked to do through these cards it is so clear i mean it is so great let's look at these columns we've got the road and garden Again, this has to do with leaving a place or going to a place. Movement. Movement is indicated here. And what's also possible is that sense of the outdoors. Um, so, you know, the idea of going out for a run, going for a hike, getting some fresh air. This sense of movement and being outdoors, you know, it has to do with freedom and, you know, getting some fresh air. And of course, this can happen physically and probably it will help you to do that, but it's also metaphorically, you know, with the idea of an ending. So we've got the coffin and stork. You know, it's possible that you'd had something on hold for a while and um, you now want to get back into action, you know, but in order to do that, you want to put this thing to an end so that you can focus on what you actually care about right now. This episode is finished. Just, you know, admit that, be willing to let it go and come back into action in other areas that had been on hold in your life. And this is key. And the, the stork is also inviting you along with the coffin to just put something to an end, you know, like you need to move on. It's enough, enough waiting, enough giving it chances, enough, you know, being stuck in it. It's time to really change things around and, you know, take flight and, you know, fly high and let this go. And then we've got the sun and star, a beautiful set of cards here all around, wish fulfillment, healing, growth, enlightenment. I mean, all the good stuff is indicated by each of them separately. So obviously when they're gonna figure together, you have double the energy and so that sense of spirituality can also come through you know that sense of healing and i think that sense of you you know that sense of greatness can come to you through these cards they are so pretty um it is definitely a phase of growth you know anytime we close a door anytime we close a chapter we think about what happened and in this process you know, we assimilate these important lessons. So this can be some really precious time. Time to close the chapter, if not the whole book, hey? And to move into a new chapter or a new book altogether. And, you know, this is gonna feel really, really liberating, really relieving. Um, some advice that I like to give when I see the stork and the coffin and, you know, these kind of ending cards is, you might wanna declutter, get rid of old stuff, you know, that doesn't, uh, 
you know, that doesn't bring you happiness, you know, like that joy thing that people go around talking about, you know, whatever makes you happy, you keep. And change yourself, change, you know, some things in your environment, try new places, let go of the situation and go explore something different for a change for now. So a wonderful set of cards. I'd love to hear your comments about this. So please leave them in the comment section. I'm looking forward to reading them. And before I let you go, I want to remind you that I have some helpful links for you all about Lenormand private readings as well as how to master the cards. So check them out. And I'm so looking forward to our next reading together. So thanks again for tuning in and I'm looking forward to our next time.